Brother uh, Phil, uh, when you're ready, I don't know if you want to do that tonight, just kind of give you a, give a report of what went on. We don't have to do that tonight. We can do it next week whenever gets, all right, get something together and just talk about your your trip and the, and the meeting and and uh, how many times you got stopped at the border and all the searches you went through. And yeah, she's kind of got that look. Uh, yeah, in a wheelchair. I don't know. It seemed like I saw a film, uh, video clip of somebody in a wheelchair. I don't think it was her, where they found all kinds of drugs on doing a, doing a search. May have been a similar looking wheelchair. I don't know. Yeah. God is good. Good to have you back. And praise God and thank Him for your safe journeys, safe traveling. We're going to be in a John chapter 10, starting about verse 11 earlier in the. The passage, the Lord had told him that he was the door. And the Lord is the door. There's no other way in except uh, by the Lord. The Bible says there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. He's the door of the sheepfold. Only way in is through Jesus Christ. That others have tried getting up other ways. Uh, and they're thieves and robbers. You've got to come in at the door can't get so high you can't get over it so low you can't get under it so wide you can't get around it you got to come in at the door Jesus was the door and then here in verse 11 he starts the discourse about being the good shepherd he's the chief shepherd and a lot of times I know many times the children of Israel and and we, we always look at ourselves as a flock the Lord's flock. I do a message entitled, Stay with the Flock. Stay with your church. Stay with the flock. You get outside that flock and there's danger. Uh, there's disappointment. It's always when those sheep, whenever they get outside of the flocks, when they get in trouble. Someone's always outside the flock looking uh, to destroy, to hurt, to kill and destroy. They're looking for the wounded and the weak, the weary. And so you stay with the flock. Here the Lord uses the analogy that he is the good shepherd. Verse 11, he says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. I heard a preacher preach this, and, and I don't know that I'd heard it before, but I agreed with him, and it, and it made sense to me, the fact that David was a man after God's own heart, probably hinged on the fact that on two occasions, he willingly laid down his life for his father's sheep. If you remember the, the lion and the bear, what David did there, he willingly put, he loved the sheep. He loved his father's sheep enough to put his life on the line. He put himself secondary in his safety and to look after his father's sheep. Now here the Lord's got a discourse with the Pharisees. Uh, the religious leadership, the, the Pharisees who were into religion but weren't really in to what God wanted them to be. And a lot of church today, the Lord's church is that way. A lot of us have a tendency uh, to look to religion instead of biblical Christianity. What saith the scriptures? We come up with all kinds of rituals. And I know every church has traditions, but... Uh, uh, the Lord will warn them about teaching traditions for doctrines. You don't teach for doctrine the traditions of men. You go by what God says about it. So he says, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Now the, the Pharisees were the shepherds of Israel. Uh, they were the leaders of Israel and uh, They'd been casting folks out, out of the, the synagogue. They was trying to set it up where it was just an elite group. And uh, I'll read a passage from Ezekiel. I've got down here, Ezekiel 34 in verse 1. It says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. He's talking about this crowd of Pharisees. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord unto the shepherds. Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? 
Ye eat the fat, and ye clothe ye with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. The diseased have ye not strengthened, neither have ye healed that which was sick. Neither have ye bound up that which was broken. Neither have ye brought again that which was driven away. Neither have ye sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them. My, my, my. And you know that same prophecy of Ezekiel goes on to present the true shepherd of Israel. And that's the good shepherd, the chief shepherd, Jesus Christ. He said, For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day when he is among his sheep that are scattered. So will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. I will feed my flock and I will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord God. I will seek that which was lost and bring again that which was driven away and will bind up that which was broken and will strengthen that which was sick. And I will set up one shepherd over them and he shall feed them. Even my servant David, he shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. Thus shall they know that I, the Lord their God, am with them, and that they, even the house of Israel, are my people. Are my people, saith the Lord. Uh, And ye, my flock, the flock of my pasture, are men. And I am your God, saith the Lord God. Uh, That is verse 11, 12. uh, I've skipped a couple in there. 15, 16, 23, 30, and 31. And... Ezekiel uh, here is not only an Old Testament prophet that presents the Lord as a shepherd. Uh, in his dying prediction, uh, David decla- in the, uh, his dying uh, prediction, David declared, "From thence, the mighty God of Jacob is the shepherd, the stone of Israel." You remember Psalms twenty-three: "The Lord is my shepherd." Uh, I don't know if, if most of you know what. Uh, the term hyper dispensationalism is. It's folks that, that, that think just the Pauline epistles are for the church and some of them even narrow it down to the prison epistles. It gets, it gets kind of weird. And they kind of ignore the rest of the Bible. Uh, <clears throat> but a hyper dispensationalist will tell you that nowhere was the church referred to as a flock. But, but that's not quite true. Remember what the Lord said. Of other sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this flock. And he's talking about the church. When he says that. So the Lord refers to the church as sheep also. Uh, now the, book, the Mormons will claim that that other flock is the Mormons. But that don't wash. It's this other flock. The Lord is our chief shepherd. Isaiah said this. He said the, the Lord God. It's Isaiah 40 and verse 10. said the Lord God will come with strong hand. And his arm shall rule for him. Behold his reward is with him. And his work before him. He shall feed his flock like shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm. And carry them in his bosom. And shall gently lead those that are with young. Now, you look at these passages, and, and most of them deal with Israel and the Lord. When the Lord returns and set, sets up the kingdom, the millennial reign of Christ, he'll be seated on the throne of David in the city of Jerusalem. The Bible says, and to, us a ch- son is, to us a child is given, to us a son is given, to us a child is born, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And it talks about his government, of the increase of his government to, uh, upon the throne of David to order and to establish it in judgment and in justice henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts shall perform this. The Lord's going to show up, set up his throne in the city of Jerusalem, and he's going to rule the nations. Israel will, will rule the nations with a rod of iron. But, but God's people, Israel... The chosen people of God. Jesus Christ will lead them. 
and take care of them. Zechariah 13, 7, the Bible says, Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. In addition to the prophecies, the Old Testament is just filled with types uh, which foreshadow Christ in the character here as a shepherd. Uh, Several types of shepherds, individual shepherds who uh, pointed to Christ. Uh, First one, I assume, was Abel. Remember the story of Cain and Abel? Abel was a shepherd. Cain, uh, Cain was a farmer and he brought all the, the fruits of his works, the works of his hands before the Lord, and the Lord didn't have respect to them. What did Abel do? Abel shed a little blood, brought him a lamb. Genesis 4 and verse 2, we're told that Abel was a keeper of the sheep, and the shepherd Abel presented a blood sacrifice was, which was acceptable to the Lord. And Abel was slain by his brother Cain. You look at Jacob. Jacob is a care of the sheep. Joseph, Joseph fed the flock, the Bible says. Moses, Moses watered, protected, and he guided the sheep. David, we talked about David putting his life on the line for his father's sheep. That's because he loved his father. And in turn, love that which pertained to his father. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friends. Wow. David put his line on the life twice and was considered a man after God's own heart. Now there's another individual shepherd referred to in the Old Testament. And he's called the idol shepherd. And if you notice, the key there is the spelling of this idle shepherd. It's not spelled I-D-L-E. It's spelled I-D-O-L. Idols. That's a bad contact text for a a shepherd setting up idols. Uh, This idle shepherd of Zechariah 11, 16, he's the Antichrist. Idle shepherd. You've got to be... Leery of folks always setting up idols. Uh, the only uh, other individual shepherd mentioned in Scripture, of course, is the Lord Jesus. And he's a seventh. The number of perfection. It says, a good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. And the good shepherd gave his life freely and voluntarily in the place of, in the stead of, You and me, his sheep. He willingly, it wasn't forced on him. He said, no man taketh my life from me. I lay it down willingly of myself. He became a ransom for us. He was willing to do that. And he did that so that we might be delivered from death. And open the door to eternal life for us. He's still the door. Always has been the door. Uh, The only way you get to heaven is through the door. That door was effectually opened to the Old Testament saints that went into paradise when the Lord went down into paradise. Remember that day that told that thief today thou shalt be with me in paradise. He went there, presented his credentials as their Messiah. And their atonement was completed. Prior to that time, they had already exercised repentance toward God, but only when the Lord showed up did they and identified himself, presented his credentials, did they then place faith in Jesus Christ. Repentance toward God, faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this verse describes the nature, the extent of the atonement. He gave his life. For and in behalf of the sheep, he, he died as our substitute. Uh, when the Lord hung on the cross, he was there in my place. He became my substitute. He paid my debt. I'm the one that had it coming. 
I'm the one that owed the debt. He didn't. The wages of sin is death. He did no sin. He, he owed no debt. But he paid mine. He paid yours. And he paid all those who would by faith become part of the whosoever wills that the Lord had beckoned. Verse 12 in our text says, But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own sheep, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. My, my, my. We've been watching the last few weeks this thing unfold at the school down in Florida. Policemen standing by outside while kids were getting killed. That's unconscionable. I remember right after Columbine High School, you know, and a lot of the, the police departments around the country had the policy that, that you know, you, you, you stage first before you go in. You wait on a team, then you go in. But you can't... I, I had a, 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 a talk with Stan Holt, my nephew, Jeff's brother, who is chief of police of Batesville. When that happened, I said, you, we can't do that. You can't wait. That's your, that's your kids that are being killed inside that school. If it was your kid... There's nothing would hold you back than going in there as fast as you could directly to the shooter and you confront him. You do the best that you can do to take that shooter out. And that, that is the policy of the, that had become the law of the land, basic SOP for police departments after that. You go to the shooter in the most expeditious manner. Uh, you don't wait for anything. Why? Because we're charged with protecting our kid. The good shepherd is charged with protecting the sheep. And here it talks about the hireling. He that is a hireling and not the shepherd whose own sheep, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. Now, uh, it's obvious the Lord here, he's pointing to the Pharisees again and uh, unfaithful shepherds of Israel. They had become nothing but a big religious club, a religious hierarchy. Uh, the hireling shepherd is not the owner of the sheep, and uh, it says whose own the sheep are not. The hireling is in the ministry for the money and for the prestige. He, like, he likes folks to, how you doing, reverend? Down at the marketplace. Said that they would wear those broad flak trees. Some of them wear the fancy outfits so everybody knows, boy, I'm something special. Mm. When the money's gone, usually so is the hireling. He moves on. Notice in the verse here that if, if the wolf can scatter the sheep, it says that the wolf can scatter the sheep but not devour them. Yeah, a wolf can come in and just scatter the whole church. If, um, some of you here been in church for a lot of years. You've seen that happen. The wolf can come in and just scatter the sheep. I've seen a couple of churches, good, healthy churches. Man, it's like an east wind blew through it and just scattered everybody. Boy, pastor, you, you just have to be vigilant. Sometimes it'll, it'll, it'll catch you sideways. It'll, it'll get you where you're not expecting it. Not only folks to, to come in, devour the sheep, scatter the sheep, uh, uh, I remember Todd Gabbard and I have had this conversation. and said, another thing you've got to look out is for bully sheep. Not only preachers come in, but bully sheep. Sheep that are trying to bully the other sheep. Phil, you raise sheep all your life, you and your dad. And there'd be one or two that would all the time be, be trying to bully the crowd, wouldn't there? We called them out every year. Called them out. The preacher's got to do the same thing. <laughs> Call them out. Call them out. 
And there will be bullies. I remember one, I'd, I'd get a couple calves every year to raise to butcher. And, and uh, I'd always try to get gentle calves because I used a, an electric fence. And i go try to uh, personally select the calves that I wanted from where I got them from. And this one year, I didn't get to choose a second calf. And so they chose one for me. And the minute that that calf got off the trailer... I knew I was in trouble. That big wild-eyed look in its eye and stand off and run over and... My. The second time that calf got out and got the other one out, my neighbor, Steve Pitts, was my neighbor. And the first time I went, it got in his pasture with his cattle, and I went and got it back. And the second time it got out, once they get out, they, they just love getting out. So the second time that calf got out, it got in Steve Pitt's pasture again. I told Steve, I said, make yourself a deal. You just bought that calf. I don't want it. Make yourself a good deal on it and just send me a check for whatever you think is a good deal. And, and you just bought that calf. I won't have it back. About a week and a half later, I heard on the radio that they were chasing a calf <laughs> along 421 over by the fairgrounds. Guess what the, who that calf was? That is that same very calf that I'd... But they're, sh they're sheep who have nothing to do but bully other sheep. I have an evangelist come in. I want them to feed the sheep. I don't want them bullying them up. Sometimes they need skin, but, uh, but, uh, but you're always watchful. You're always on the watch. That's what a shepherd does. Hmm. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. And, and that's true uh, in every walk of life. You know, motive always dictates the kind of care. Jeff, you learned that from the restroom. People you have working for you. Depends how they're motivated. Whether they care uh, uh, for the name of the restaurant, that it's got a good name and this and that. You, you, you see, their, their care for who they work for and what they represent dictates. That, that care is brought about, brings about motive. Shows the motives because they're looking after you. I've seen some posts on textbook, folks that worked with you at the reservation, talk how good everything was and just really building it up. I've seen others that work some places and all they do is badmouth where they work. Man, you don't want to work this place. It's the sorriest bunch I ever saw in my life. That sheep needs to find a new pastor. New pasture and pastor. All right. But he that is in a hireling and not the shepherd. Got to watch out for that. The paid shepherd flees because his investment is only money. I remember one of the churches I belonged to several years ago. They were, we were trying out a new pastor. And he come in and first thing he did is sit down and demand on how much money he had to have. Yeah, I've got to have this, I've got to have this, and a retirement plan, this, this, this. And this is a little church. And I thought, we don't need him. That's all I studied about. So how about you, preacher? Well, I, I know I've got to live. I told my folks when I came here, they asked how much money I needed. I said, I don't know. What if, whatever you pay, if it's not enough, I'll have to get a job. Just that simple. It's always worked out. You got to somewhere. You got to trust God to take care of you. No matter what kind of work you do here today, if you're trusting in that equipment you're running, uh, look out. You better trust in God and know that God promises to supply all of your needs according to His riches and glory. If you've got a bus that breaks down on Jellico Mountain, I'm, I really didn't mean to bring that up, Brother Tim. It can happen, can it? And I bet you was the one that called under it and had to do all that 
greasy work, weren't you? All right. For some reason, I just don't see Jimmy laying under that. Let me, let me move on. Let me move on. A true shepherd who loves a sheep has a greater investment. And there, therefore, he demonstrates that care. A shepherd needs to fall in love with a sheep. A pastor needs to fall in love with his people. Really does. Really does. Uh, Apostle Paul told the Ephesian elders, he said, For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Verse 14, he said, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. Hebrews 13, 20 says, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of an everlasting covenant. 1 Peter 5, 4, When the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory, which fadeth not away. Our shepherd, Jesus Christ, knows his sheep. Does he know you? He says that, you're known of him, too. You, uh, in fact, it says a stranger, they won't follow. They won't follow a stranger. I remember taking care of John Maxwell's sheep for a couple weeks. He had uh, surgery, and he had a lot of sheep over there, and I, I spent a week with him before he had to go to the hospital and l- learn the routine of those sheep. And when I first came, came in there with them, they were very skittish and standoffish toward me. They wouldn't follow me. John take off down through the field. Wherever he went, they followed him like puppies, just right behind him. Not me. Why? Because I was a stranger. Right now, some of my folks, uh, the houses, Jeff's sister and their boys and a bunch of them are down in, in Florida on vacation. And I'm looking after a couple calves, a couple heifers supposed to have calves this week. So I've been going up, trying to buddy up to them. I've been taking apples up to them every day. I'll take two apples. I'll cut an apple in half, and I'll give them a half at a time. And man, when I started coming in there, and the one's got a bad reputation for kicking you. One of those side kicks, you know, where you looks at you like that, go and kicks you. So I've been, avo- I've been staying, keeping my distance from that calf. But I've been going in every day, every day with a couple of apples. And the, the more I go, the less skittish they get of me. So when hopefully they deliver that calf, hopefully I'll be gone somewhere. But if they deliver that calf, I won't be a stranger to them. Stranger to them. The good shepherd... Is the good shepherd your shepherd? Jesus Christ, is he your shepherd? Is he your chief and only shepherd? He's the one we follow. Now, I know Paul said, follow me as as I follow Christ. I understand that. But, But our authority is that book, the Word of God, and he's the one we should be following. Hopefully, the pastor is following those same steps. We're on the same uh, track. Uh, Is your dependence on the Lord... Is your hope in him? Is your, or do you rest in him? Is your safety in him? You see how this relates to a shepherd? See, the, those sheep depend on the shepherd. They depended. Uh, the, their hope was in the shepherd. If they were going to get feed, they, they waited on the shepherd. Uh, they rested knowing the love and the care that they got from their shepherd. They knew that they were safe from the wolves and from the outside influences because of the shepherd. Their desire was to that shepherd, the keeper of the flock. Verse 15, he says, As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. My mind. Romans 5 and verse 6, the Bible says, For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 
The good shepherd, boy, what compassion. He shows that compassion and concern for the sheep. He loved us. Uh, and this is a, a direct contrast to the Antichrist over there in Zechariah 11. The hirelings are, are always contrast, easily contrasted. 1 Peter 5, 1 to 4, it says, The elders which are among you I exhort, which also am an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. And then he's, he said in our text, And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. That's the church he's talking about. Been talking to Israel. Now he speaks to Israel about other sheep. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one Shepherd. Mm. For in Christ there's neither Jew nor Gentile, Jew nor Greek, but one body. Now, some will teach that uh, these other sheep are, are the Jews in the dispersion, and they'll cite Ezekiel 34 6, talking about the sheep wandering through the mountains and upon every high hill. Talks about the scattered flock. But it appears that prophecy will be uh, fulfilled during the tribulation and at the second advent when is Israel is uh, finally restored. The other sheep here seem to point directly to the Gentiles who would trust Christ for salvation, the church. Uh, I read Ephesians 2 and verse 11 says this. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision... By that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus ye who were sometime, who sometime were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of part between us said in our text there shall be one fold and one shepherd Galatians 3 28 there is neither Jew that's a verse there is neither Jew nor Greek there is neither bond nor free there is neither male nor female for ye are all one in Christ Jesus it's the other flock so the Lord is still our shepherd he's the one that we follow He's our guide. He's the one that we look to. If we're going to be fed, we need to look to the shepherd. If we're going to have safety, look to the shepherd. He's the one that puts a hedge about us for protection. One of my prayers for years has been that God put a hedge about our church. Protect us because you never know who's going to walk through the door. They might appear just like a shining light. Be mean as a Rattlesnake, you don't know. Be sober, be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Got to take care of the sheep. Got to let the Lord be the one that takes care of us. Got to pay attention. Watch, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. Stay with the flock, the flock of God the good shepherd, the chief shepherd, Jesus Christ. Interesting analogy with the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. That's our shepherd. Last night I was walking down... It was dark last night doing my prayer walk about close to midnight last night. And it was, it was dark, cloudy, real cloudy, real, uh, real dark up that, that road. And then all, all the, 
all my relation along that road are gone. All no lights on anywhere. And I'm walking down that down that road, and my neighbor's dog, big Ruger dog, was wanting to bite me, but uh, I, he didn't know I had a treat in my pocket. So I went up got, while he was there going, and I just paid him. I saw that tail wagon. That's the indicator. Even though he is growling with his growler, had tail was wagging. So I went up petted him, he went, and then I pulled out a tree, and went, oh! grab that tree as fast to make your head spin. All right. But I got to thinking of that. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. It was dark. Because I had the light of the Lord with me. So I could hear coyotes were off in the distance in a different place than they were last night than they usually were. Back there behind my house, hear the coyotes. I guess they got the new leader, uh, leaders of coyotes out there, young ones. They were cutting up last night. I was trying to keep my little dog close to me because I found out they, they can't whip coyotes, them little dogs especially. So, But the Lord is our shepherd. You've got a shepherd. You don't worry about things. You give it to the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. Thank you, Lord, that you are the good shepherd, Lord, and that you're our shepherd. And a, a stranger we will not follow, Lord, but we pray that we would learn to follow you and to trust you and to rely on you and to find our, our hope and rest in you, Lord. And we'll thank you for that uh, a labor of love that you have done for us, Lord, and help us to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Savior. Uh, meet with us today in the worship service, Lord. To give, give me the unction to preach. Fill me with the Holy Ghost of God. And, Lord, open hearts. And we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' holy name. Amen.